English 101 was focused on rhetorical awareness, understanding audience and purpose, learning about the rhetorical appeals and how they engage and persuade the audience. In English 102, we will still discuss rhetoric, but we will be also focusing on genre. So what is genre? Genre means a category or a kind or type of something that is defined by similarities in form, style, content, etc., and typically used when referring to art, music, or literature. For example, we use the term genre when referring to different categories of music, such as blues, reggae, punk, R&B, classical, jazz, or hip-hop, and also movies such as sci-fi, horror, comedy, action, drama, or documentary. And genre may be broken into subgenres or hybrid genres, such as romantic comedies, a comedy subgenre, disaster films, an action subgenre, or future noir, a sci-fi hybrid genre. You are probably familiar with some common text-based genres like poetry, fiction, drama, autobiographies, essays, diaries, or journals. And there are also various subgenres of literature, different kinds of poems, sonnets, ballads, villanelles, different types of fiction, short stories, novellas, novels, different types of drama, comedies, tragedies, history plays, one-act plays, different kinds of essays, persuasive essays, informative essays, process analysis essays, as well as different kinds of new media or digital texts, emails, blogs, tweets, text messages, etc. Genres make use of specific identifiable features of language that establish a rhetorical situation. Essentially, we can recognize a genre by these identifiable features. There are expectations we have of a genre or conventions in the shape, form, and content of how a text is composed. Thus, if I put a book in front of you, you would be able to tell fairly readily if it were a textbook or a novel. While these are both fairly lengthy books, there are differences in content, design, layout, etc., so that just by leafing through the book, you could determine what kind of book it is based on the conventions of how they are composed or the expectations you have of each genre. Similarly, there are various signs you see driving down the highway, and you can tell by a quick glance whether it is a road sign providing important information or a billboard advertising something based on what you expect to find on different signs. Indeed, different kinds of road signs have different sizes, shapes, and colors so that we know at a glance what kind of sign it is and the information provided. A white rectangular sign with numbers is probably the speed limit, a yellow triangle is some kind of caution, and a green sign with letters and numbers is information about upcoming exits. And text messages have their own conventions and expectations. So we use the term genre when referring to the form, shape, and typical structure and style of a text. But we may also think about genre when talking about different social situations or occasions that occur over and over or in a similar time or place with similar content. Essentially, social occasions have associated genres. When it comes to occasions like birthdays, weddings, and funerals, there are certain expectations for how we should behave, interact, dress, eat, and speak. Typically, we don't wear bright colors and laugh loudly over crude jokes at a funeral, nor do we wear an old t-shirt and cutoffs to a wedding. There are also standard oral and written genres that help define these occasions, such as wedding announcements and invitations, toasts of the bride and groom, or funeral programs, eulogies, obituaries, etc. And holidays like New Year's Eve have associated genres like singing Old Lang Syne, drinking champagne, setting off fireworks, and of course, making resolutions. But genres also have related social occasions. Because different genres are used in different settings and situations, we come to recognize those typical settings and situations by the genres that are used. 
So genres both grow from and define typical repeated kinds of communication acts and needs. Whether we think about it consciously or not, the genres we choose and use to communicate demonstrate how we are envisioning or understanding the situation and carry conventions of behavior and expectations for ourselves and our recipients, readers, or intended audience. Or to think about this another way, how well we fit in with certain groups or professions that we want to be a part of depends on our knowledge and understanding of the genres used by these communities and professions and how well we demonstrate our knowledge and understanding of the conventions and expectations of those genres. One last thing, genres change over time. They morph and hybridize into subgenres, microgenres, and even new genres. For example, handwritten logs such as ship logs, travel logs, diaries, and journals migrated onto the web and became web logs or blogs. And there are ways that online or digital communication is affecting print genres. There's been the development of Twitter poetry and text speak novels, but also the design of print newspapers has changed to better reflect the layout and expectations of online news sources. And new genres are constantly blending and evolving in our internet and entertainment driven culture. So to sum up, in English 102, we are going to build on the rhetorical awareness you learned in English 101 by adding a focus on genre awareness, the form and structure of texts, and the relationship to society and culture. Genres serve a social purpose. They help us recognize similar and socially or professionally valued occasions or situations, whether general social occasions, such as weddings or funerals, or specific rhetorical situations that occur in our academic and professional lives. But we fall back on a communally developed sense of how to behave and speak, and perhaps even think in such situations. Genre and society mutually shape each other. How society or a given community expects us to behave or express ourselves in certain situations shapes different genres of written, oral, or digital communication. Similarly, people living or working in that community or society use those genres to express or shape communication that responds to the changes in their society or community then those genres necessarily evolve, and the evolution of genres makes visible societal and cultural changes. All students may benefit from learning how to understand genre. No matter your major or profession, you will be encountering and creating genres associated with those fields. So this semester, be prepared to think, read, research, and write genre.